In marketing, there is the concept of consumer expectation and consumer perception. Consumer expectation refers to what a consumer thinks of a particular product before obtaining it, and consumer perception refers to what a consumer thinks after obtaining the product. When the consumer perception falls below the expectation, it creates a gap which leads to consumer regret or buyer's remorse. Unfortunately, this is true in Genshin Impact as well. Hoyoverse introduces characters through appearance in the stories, their character teasers and demos, which brings hype to the players for wanting to obtain sick characters, be it for their coolness, personality, expectation of a fun kit, and so on. However, there have been times where Hoyoverse builds up the player expectation, but once the character reaches the player's accounts, the player's perceptions are unfortunately below their expectations, thereby leading to regret for some of these characters' pull. In today's video, I will be going through the characters I truly regret pulling up to pet 3.8, especially since those Primo Gems could have gone to better characters. I really hope that I don't experience this again, especially in Fontaine. Note that these are the characters I regret pulling. As I didn't pull for Deya, I will of course not be including her in this video. Who are your most regrettable pulls? Let me know in the comment section below. Before we begin the video, can I just mention that 96.2% of you who watch my videos are not yet subscribed. As I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers, I really hope that you can subscribe to help me realise my goal. Thank you so much in advance. Without further ado, my name is ChargeCoin and let's begin the video. For the number 4 character that I regret pulling, we have Eula. As I mentioned in the previous video, I pulled Eula since she was the only physical damage dealer and seemed interesting, and her Japanese voice actress, Satorina, voiced one of my favourite characters from my very first anime. Unfortunately, I personally felt that her kit really let her down. Not only was her kit difficult to use because there were so many steps to get her optimal damage, her burst was also easily missable and not really optimal to use outside in the overworld due to energy recharge issues. Now, I rarely use Eula because physical damage has yet to be relevant in Genshin Impact due to the prevalence of elemental shields and I just wish that I saved the Primo Gems for another character instead. For the third character that I regret pulling, we have Xiao. When Xiao was released in patch 1.3, I skipped him so that I could pull for Hu Tao instead. When he finally came back in patch 2.7, I really knew that his kid had issues, but I really wanted him because of his appearance in the 2.7 event story. His sacrifice for the Traveller and the team made me just want to pull him so badly. Unfortunately, although I was happy that I managed to get him, I rarely use him now. Why? Because as I mentioned previously, his kid really has a lot of issues. Firstly, Xiao's main source of damage is his burst. However, his burst is stronger for multiple targets and not single targets, which make him less viable for bosses. As such, he should be better for those smaller enemies, am I right? Unfortunately, that is not true as well. His burst will also knock back those smaller enemies, meaning that they get spread out and makes it harder for Xiao to defeat all of them. Xiao also has energy recharge issues as he does not gain particles during his burst, which spells doom for him since he cannot deal damage if he cannot get his burst up. Finally, this is my personal opinion, but to me, his playstyle is quite boring. It is literally just pressing the space bar and left clicking to jump and plunge. Moreover, plunging is quite slow, which makes it kinda clunky and just not that smooth to play in general. The number 2 character that I regret pulling is Ito. I put Ito back on his first banner in patch 2.3. I honestly did not like his design as much back then, but I still decided to pull for him because his elemental burst looked extremely cool. Imagine summoning the power of the Oni or demon and getting a huge club as a weapon, that is so freaking cool. However, after I obtained him, while indeed his burst was cool, he really just wasn't that fun. Firstly, his primary support is Goro, whose E skill can increase the defense and geo damage of the team based on how many geo characters are in the team. As such, if you want Ito to be strong, you will have to pair him with at least 3 Geo characters, including himself and Goro, which makes the teams that you can create with him extremely limited and boring. Secondly, Ito also suffers from the same issue as Eula. For meta riddled with elemental shields, it is extremely difficult to justify having a Geo DPS when the shields cannot be taken down by him. Third, his playstyle is also quite annoying and complicated as you will need to accumulate the superlative stacks in order to use his special charged attacks, it is very difficult to track how many stacks you have in the heat of battle, which may cause his charged attacks to end early if you do not have enough stacks. 
thereby affecting his overall DPS. Fourth, Ito also has horrible energy recharge issues similar to both Xiao and Yula. Considering he's also a burst DPS, not being able to get the burst up even with Goro and Zhongyi helping with the Geo particle generation is just bad. Finally, as Geo does not trigger any reactions other than crystallize, which is to generate chills, it means that Ito as a Geo damage DPS is missing out on those elemental reactions to deal larger damage. He just doesn't deal as much damage as you would like to think. This is especially true if you do not have the right supports for him. Finally, the number one character that I regret for pulling the most is Sino. Sino is the general Mahamatra of Sumeru. What do you think of when that was mentioned? He has got to be the best fighter in Sumeru, right? Otherwise, how could he enforce the law? Moreover, with his elemental burst, he keeps his spears and grows claws to deal damage to the enemy. How cool is that? However, when I got my hands on him, he's really just one huge disappointment. Firstly, his kit scales off attack and elemental mastery. The reason behind this is that Hoyoverse wants you to continuously trigger especially the dendro-related reactions such as Aggravate and Hyper Bloom to deal damage to the enemy. While his burst lasts for 18 seconds, most of the supports who are good for him, such as Bai Tzu and Xing Chu, only have their burst last for 14 seconds and 15 seconds respectively, meaning that Xino is doing pure electro damage without reactions for 30 to 50% of his burst uptime. While Nahida's E skill can last for up to 25 seconds, she will need to reapply it if the enemy is defeated. Sino is hence not fully utilizing the purpose of his kit if he is unable to benefit from those reactions. As Sino's burst also ends once he is swapped out, you literally cannot reactivate the support skills or burst to support Sino during his own burst. Other than that, the same issue that plagued the previous characters such as Yula, Xiao and Ito are also present with Sino. Sino is also a burst damage DPS, but he has significant energy recharge issues that prevent him from getting his burst up consistently. What's more, at least Ito and Yula both had resistance to interruption when using their burst or from their skill, so that they can deal damage more reliably without getting knocked around. Sino, however, doesn't have that resistance to interruption, which means that his team compositions are even more limited since you will always want a shielder for him to function well. Finally, overall, he's just outclassed by the Raiden Shogun. If you put for Raiden, you literally have no need for Sino, which I wished I knew back then. Raiden has a huge initial burst damage, Sino doesn't. Raiden also has increased resistance to interruption during her burst, Sino also doesn't have that. And finally, Raiden can recharge energy for a team during her burst, Sino can't do that as well. I really wish that I didn't let the Sumeru hype get to me and just left Sino alone. With that, we have come to the end of today's video. I'm really interested to see if you agree with my picks or you have your own. Do leave your own opinions down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, do consider leaving a like, comment or subscribe as it will really help me in my goal towards 1000 subscribers. I regularly post Genshin and Honkai Star Rail videos and I hope that you will be here to watch them when they release. Thank you and see you next time!